Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Generation Y Conservative Podcast. You know, being a klutz and winning a lawsuit at the expense of a business serving you has always been the national pastime for Americans. <laughs> From spilling hot coffee on yourself to slipping on floors that have a wet floor sign. <clears throat> well, the latest is a man who was awarded over $7 million against Walmart. We'll talk about how he won that lawsuit. Plus, when prostitution goes wrong. <laughs> Could it go right? I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, a cold. It's very expensive a, for it to go right. <laughs> a cold hearted and calculating, according to investigators, prostitute shot a man twice in the head for bad sex. <laughs> The Harvard, Univ the Harvard University adds a list of prestigious courses to its curriculum for sex week workshops. Also, if you heard a howling noise on the night of the 8th outside, like a bunch of wounded wolves crying at the moon, fret not. Twas merely emotionally unstable liberals bemoaning the anniversary of Trump's election. The hashtag Me Too uh, campaign isn't finished with the entertainment industry. This week we add Jeremy Piven and magician David Blaine to the list, who coincidentally disappeared when we asked about the show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, racism. Racism everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From two raci racism charged graffiti incidents that made the viral rounds that have turned out to be fake to a man traveling to DC to kill all white cops and the NAACP calling for the national anthem to be changed because of the racist undertones. We also get into politics with Senator Rand Paul being attacked by his raging radical lunatic leftist loony neighbor. All the way out to a new story about uh, Keith Olbermann making a partisan hack idiot of himself on The View. And also USA Today getting their video game arsenals mixed up with real life. <laughs> I know it's hard to keep the facts straight. They are rumored to be putting together a 30-minute piece on the Doom BFG this weekend as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our main topic tonight is the mass shooting at a church in Texas that killed 26 people. Uh, what we know so far in some details, it doesn't it seems like a last month at this point with yeah. how, how things have been going, but we will get to that. But don't worry, there's even more sprinkled in there that we will talk about as we go along. Get ready, get set. This is the Generation Y Conservative Podcast. Welcome to the Generation Y Conservative Podcast. Again, I'm glad that you could join me here tonight where the truth is greater than agenda. You can follow me on social media right now. You might be watching on Facebook Live where we live stream the podcast while we're recording it for the YouTube version and for uh, the radio version, which I'll get to in a minute. If you head over to the Generation Y Conservative page, you can hit like and then also go to the get notifications so that you can be notified when we go live with the podcast. Also, you can find me on uh, YouTube by searching for the Generation Y Conservative. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to be notified when we publish new videos. After, um, after the podcast tonight, we're actually going to be shooting the movie review for Thor, so that should be up by next week as well. Yep. Uh, so you can check that out on the channel, as well as pod, the podcast in its entirety, as well as some bits and pieces that we've cut out uh, that we find thought you might find interesting. Uh, last week, I actually cut together some of the funniest pieces from the podcast, and you can check that out, funny bits and pieces from the podcast. Uh, it was pretty funny. Also, if you want to interact with me on Twitter, you can find me at Gen Y Conservative without the E on the end. Um, that's always fun. The... Internet radio station that I go on to is from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLRN Internet Radio, which airs my podcast on Sundays from 3 to 6 p.m. So you can always go there and listen to the audio version. Or you can also find me on iTunes, where they have graciously put me. Uh, just search for the Generation Y Conservative Podcast on iTunes, and it will show up as the Generation Y Conservative Podcast by KLRN Internet Radio. Um, I know I have some followers that specifically just follow me on that that I'm grateful for that listen to me while they're working and everything. And cool. One specifically who was on the podcast, uh, I believe Goody said that <laughs> he'll have his earbuds in, just start cracking up and everybody <laughs> in the cubicles around him wondering what the heck is going on. So <laughs> that's the way it is. Well, listen, uh, we've been spotlighting charities every month, and we feature them for a full month and give you more details as the months progress uh, throughout the month. And this month is no different. We're featuring a really cool charity called Team Rubicon. And uh, I thought it would actually be cool to show you a video that they put together. So check this out. 
and uh, we'll get into the podcast right after it. We all have a purpose. Sometimes it comes to us without calling. And sometimes we come upon it after a dark, dusty journey. Not sure of what we'll find or who we'll be when we come out the other side. And we find we're navigating a road of cause and effect, learning it all connects back to what we've done, what we are doing, and who we are becoming. To find our purpose in the turn of a key, the click of a button, or the swing of a hammer. In a handshake, a hug, a high five. From sore muscles, blistered feet, dust in our nostrils, mud in our ears, or from supporting these soiled souls from afar, making their four hours of sleep look a bit more solid and a stiff back a little more ready to tackle the new day. For when that purpose comes knocking, we stand on the line and stare it down, pulling that hard routine into a full-on bear hug embrace. And when it tests us, we wince instead of whine, we grunt instead of groan, we ask for more instead of crying uncle. We all have a purpose. But in the end, how you define your purpose, well, that's up to you. As you see there, the website address for that is teamrubiconusa.org. It's a great organization for veterans in our military to join in and volunteer for both national emergencies that people are involved in, as well as international. I believe it's teamrubiconglobal.org is the international website where these veterans get together and volunteer and head out to natural disaster areas like uh, Houston and uh, Florida and the wildfires. They've gone over to um, like Haiti and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I believe. But they're deployed all over the world. There's over 60,000 volunteers at this point, and they just get together and help out and, and work with local governments to get grants to help do the work. So it's just an awesome organization. If you are a veteran and you're interested in volunteering, head over to the website and check it out. You can also donate to their cause as well by visiting the website as well. Again, that's www.teamrubiconusa.org. So big thanks to them, and I hope that you are uh, able to support them as well. <sighs> it's a little cold in the bunker tonight. <laughs> we're, hey, everyone. We're a little... <laughs> I should have gotten my gloves. Um, Listen, so we've talked about how YouTube's demonetizing yeah. the show and everything yeah. like that. So if any viewers out there want to contribute, a space heater is greatly needed. Yeah. You know, yeah. we greatly appreciate Hit it. Hit the donate button Hit on the, the YouTube. Button, yes, somewhere around. <laughs> um, by the way, of course, I didn't mention returning guest Mike. So I appreciate him coming back out here. You uh, better. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting out here in the cold like this, uh, I'm not going to appreciate the pneumonia. By the way, tomorrow. <laughs> by the way, if this podcast is still streaming at nine o'clock in the morning and we're just sitting here like this, just just, just, send some help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send some help out into the country. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the first story tonight: an Alabama man who said he tripped and broke his foot and hip while buying a watermelon at a Walmart store has won a seven point five million dollar verdict in his lawsuit against the retail. Henry Walker, who was 59 years old at the time of the incident, was awarded the damages on Wednesday. And the decision to award $2.5 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages was reached by a jury comprised of seven African Americans and five whites. I don't know what that has to do. I don't have a picture of the actual guy, so maybe they thought that was relevant. Yeah, uh, even split. Maybe I should have moved this to the other section I have going on. <laughs> Walker had sued Arkansas-based uh, Walmart Stores Incorporated, saying his foot became trapped in a pallet beneath the watermelons as he reached for one of the fruits at Phoenix City Walmart in, on uh, June 25th of 2015. Uh, Gower's partner on the legal team, David Rayfield, said, I think this, injury, this jury appreciated what Mr. Walker went through and they compensated him accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I step on a pallet, I step across the slats, not with the slats. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of common knowledge, yeah, but, yeah. you know, to each his own, I guess. Hey, obviously he knows what he's doing and we don't. 
<laughs> well, some things are more important, and watermelons happens to be this guy's yep, fruit. Yep. <laughs> so it's just it's just amazing seeing. This has been going on for quite a while. Like the people that spill the coffee on themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. and. That get was, that was a long millions of dollars. Yeah. Oh no, that still happens. Oh all, yeah, all the time. Yeah, but it's just ridiculous. But people can't <laughs> like <laughs> it, you have to you literally have to be a bubble person going into a place to yeah. like ensure that you don't get sued. Yep, you know, I know. it's ridiculous. Also, uh, we talked about this in the opening. There, a prostitute has been accused of shooting a man in the head twice because he was performing oral sex on her the wrong way, and she did not know how to tell him. <laughs> there's some jokes. There's some jokes it. in there. <laughs> there's some jokes there. I'm just not going to go into. The 36-year-old man miraculously survived. He was shot twice in the head, and well, he survived. Well, apparently. She was just as good at shooting people as yeah, he was at of youth. pleasuring ladies <laughs> orally. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the attack happened at his home in Everett, Washington on October 24th. Police have since arrested Marissa Wallen, a 21-year-old escort, who they say had been at his house several times. Maybe she told him Man. more than once. Is that how you treat a repeat client? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Customer service yeah, here. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> a probable cause document filed by police for the woman's arrest said that she was an emotionless, cold, and calculating escort. That's not going to be good for her reviews. <laughs> yeah, no, no. No. <laughs> Yelp. <laughs> Brings a whole new meaning to this case, too. <laughs> Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> so it, and, yeah, listen. You don't want to find a calculating escort either. <laughs> yeah, right. It depends on what kind of calculating she does. Yeah. In the end, she said that she was sh- that she shot the victim two times in the head because he was performing oral sex wrong, and she did not know how to tell him that. Said the documents, uh, according to My Everett News in Washington. One time wouldn't have been enough. Must have been I don't know. Really there's, awful. There's a. There's a <laughs> Yeah, it's really bad. He's paying you. Yeah. <laughs> like, Come oh, on. Oh, man. After allegedly shooting him, Wallen is said to have stolen the man's wallet and used his credit cards. Police say that she spent $12,000 of his money before she was caught. Hmm. She's just... Man. <laughs> I ain't saying she's a gold digger, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, right? Jeez. She's being held on charges of first-degree assault, first-degree robbery, and identity theft in the in the first degree, and her bail has been set at $1 million. You know what she said to that? Did you, did you read this already? No. Police say she told them to contact one of her other customers to bail her out, which has not happened yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She did what? Yeah. She did what now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, you can tell her she's lost two clients. Yeah. And number two, she's staying there. Uh, number three, uh, I don't see escorts. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't yes, know this throw, person. Throw, uh-huh. <laughs> throw the guy under the bus. Yeah. Guy, I didn't even think of that. Hey, Holy police. crap! <laughs> Call this guy. Yeah. yeah, this is this is a Washington police. Uh, uh, sir, could you yes. bail her out? And also, we have a warrant for your you arrest. Happen, <laughs> do you happen to know a prostitute, Marissa? <laughs> Uh, yeah, honey, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wife answers the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where are you going, honey? <laughs> uh, oh, man. Some business to attend to. So speaking of sex gone wrong, an Ivy League school hosted an extremely graphic anal sex workshop. Of course, what is with anal lately? It's, it's like... A, it's the th- in thing. It's the in thing. In thing. <laughs> <laughs> According to the, uh, the Blazes' Sarah Gonzalez, Harvard University hosted a workshop Tuesday evening called What, What in the Butt? Anal 101. What, what? In the butt. <laughs> in the butt. Uh, to share tips and techniques about anal sex during the school's seventh annual sex week. The presenter, a representative named Natasha from a local adult store near the university, passed out gloves and anal plugs to, that's like a rhyme, <laughs> to the students in attendance for demonstration purposes before giving them anal relaxation techniques. Mm. And also beware that these anal plugs could be hacked. Yes, seriously. <laughs> so, Harvard. Yeah. Now we paying. know the requirements to become a professor at Harvard. Yeah, seriously. I worked down at the local <laughs> sex shop. 
Five years experience. Do you work at that building down there without yeah, yeah. windows? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, that's us. <laughs> Jeez. Who's your astronomy professor? Oh, this guy that used to clean the floor at the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the planetarium. Yeah, yeah, you were watching what you said there. He was the janitor at the planetarium. He's, he's, he's qualified to be the astronomy <laughs> professor at Harvard. So giving a slide so sh- slideshow presentation, Natasha told the students that they should engage in anal intercourse because it feels good and it increases truth and intimacy. So I don't know if there's a police program at Harvard, <laughs> but when you're interrogating a suspect and you want to get to the truth, you can't yeah. handle the truth, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> she also slammed the concept of abstinence, telling the students it doesn't make any effing sense. Yeah, I'm going to take advice from the adult store person yeah. <laughs> who's selling selling uh pushing these gloves and plugs <laughs> gloves and plugs gloves, and plugs. <laughs> gloves? that's what are the coincidentally gl- their radio ad <laughs> yeah, what are the gloves for <laughs> i wouldn't want to handle them that's for sure she's uh not she also said uh not all men have penises not all women have vaginas according to um a reporter for the college fix who was in attendance the is a great sexual equalizer. All humans have one. It's it's the like, like next step up from that book. Everybody poops. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the attendees also received raffle prizes, which included expensive sex toys, and were offered a free supply of condoms, sex toy cleaners, and pamphlets from Planned Parenthood. Of course. Who do you think sponsored this yeah, event? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, silver lining. Common ground has been found. Silver or brown lining. <laughs> Bronze lining. <laughs> common, common ground has been found, okay? Not all of us agree, apparently, that all boys have penises and all girls have eyes, but we do agree everyone has a butt. Yeah. <laughs> common ground. Common ground. There's hope. Uh, Sex Week, which started November 6th and runs through November 12th, includes workshops called Dental Dam. Why does it hurt when I pee? <laughs> STIs in the BLG, BLGTQ community. I think that was backwards. STIs LG, in the BLG. LGBT, yeah, <laughs> Q community plus. Beyond the Hub, Broadening Your Porn Horizons, and Unleashed Kink 101. Yeah. It should be leashed. <laughs> <laughs> Zip it. Bondage 101. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> or how about <laughs> what donkeys to stay away from 101? Yeah. <laughs> According to last week's How to podcast, tell if your donkey has rabies. rabies. <laughs> yeah. Don't. <laughs> do just do what your dad told you. Yeah. Don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch it. All right. Oh, boy. So according to Facebook events planned all over the United States, liberals screamed helplessly at the sky to express their anguish and depression over the defeat of Hillary Clinton at the hands of President Trump a year ago. Organizers in Philadelphia, unfortunately, one of our local cities, explained the event saying, let's have a primal scream for the current state of our democracy. Okay, first of all, it's a republic. Get that straight first. Gather together after work at Philadelphia City Hall. Or just scream in solidarity from your own backyard, they add. Another Facebook event read, Let it be the scream heard around the world. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, at precisely 6 p.m. Eastern Time, let it out. So, obviously, this is the type of thing that uh, responsible, educated, you know, sane adults would do. So, let's, yeah. this, it must be a very organized, very... Mm-hmm professional scream, of right? Yeah. Has to be. First of all. <laughs> oh, geez. get a job, people. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, for oh, real. it was 6 p.m. Uh, I gotta give him uh, that. Okay. It was at night, so. Spend time with your family. <laughs> These people, 
if you participated in this, you are not watching this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't have a bone in your body of common sense. And I mean, you're not an adult. No. It's literally babies having a tantrum in yes. the corner. Yeah. So it reminds me of my kids when I yeah. tell them it's time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> Free, That's yeah. going to change it. By the way, is uh, Trump still president? Yeah. Oh, so it didn't change anything? No, nothing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I'm, I'm sure that it had some sort of effect, though, like mm. making us laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what what is the what is the purpose? I mean, do you have anything on that uh, besides they, like, that? It, they are like babies, you know. Yeah. It's it's the only logical explanation. You know. I didn't get my way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, when their leader is Hillary Clinton walking around blaming everybody, yeah. this is what everything she's, but, she's herself. but herself. This is what it fosters. You know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, we got. Uh, there's actually some people I didn't put in here that uh, fall into this thing as well. Um, mm-hmm. Like Louis C.K. We'll talk about. Him. Oh man, yeah. Did you crazy. see the response? That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh. But we'll talk about that yep. because I think it's an interesting case out of all of these. Yep. So I think it's separate. Yeah. A little bit. Anyway, another week and and more. Hashtag Me Too accusers come forward about entertainment industry men and sexual harassment and assault. This week, two more women have accused Jeremy Piven of sexual assault and harassment, bringing the total number of women to have aired allegations against him to four. Washington-based advertising executive Tiffany Bacon Scurby, 39, and a Hawaii-based porn star Isis Taylor both say Piven, 52, attacked or harassed them. In an interview with People on Thursday, Scurby told how once in his hotel room, Piven, now 52, forced himself on her and exposed his genitals and began rubbing herself, rubbing himself on her body. He jumped on top of me. I tried pushing him off and he forced me to the ground. For 15 minutes, Piven rubbed his junk on her fully clothed body. Then, uh, For how long? 15 minutes. <laughs> It's hilarious to think about. Like, how does that happen for 15 minutes? I don't like, know. After 30 seconds, how do you not just. Leave? And then he finished on her white turtleneck. Gotta be honest, turtlenecks are out of fashion, so maybe that's why. I'm just saying. Yeah. Extra, extra yeah. protection? Yeah. Let's In go the, for the Clinton move. Uh, <laughs> what article of clothing can I ever say? <laughs> Don't you? White. It's fine. <laughs> in a newly surfaced 2013 interview, uh, Taylor claimed the pair met in an after party for the 2011 NBA All-Star Game. She says she approached her. he approached her and asked, do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm starting to see a pattern here with these stars, first of all. Okay? Oh, yeah. They're full of themselves. Yep. And they have a fascination with their junk. Yeah. Yeah. That, I'm saying it's like, look at this. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein. Yep. Uh, Louis C.K., Jeremy Piven. Um, who was one of the other ones we went over? Well, Kevin Spacey. Kevin I don't know if they yeah. you know, if it was anything about him just exposing himself. He just liked little boys, apparently. It's like like it's like in, yeah. you remember it's the bad. movie Super Troopers? Yeah, when uh, the one cop like just is in the, in the trench coat. Look at me! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is with that. You know, like you always hear like stories about that or see it in movies, like a joke. But apparently, with like these Hollywood celebrity types, like it's a real thing. That, like, yeah, turns them on. And Louis C.K. has been joking about him doing it on stage for years. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. We'll get yeah, to that. Yeah. Uh, the pair then went out. He, yeah, he said, "Do you know who I am?" When she said she did not know his name but recognized his his face, she. He replied, I'm Jeremy Piven. Have you been living under a rock? <laughs> the pair then went outside to smoke, and she said... Freaking Ari. Yeah. <laughs> and Piven said, uh, with a cigar in one hand, exposed his bare penis to her. All of a sudden, Piven is like, look, all this can be yours. As he points down to it, I look down and his out in full is full blown out. She said Piven urged her, just touch it, just touch it. I'm like, all right, well, this has been real. I'm going back inside. I walked back inside, and it was the last time I saw Jeremy Piven. So it, it nothing happened, thankfully, mm-hmm. on, on this one. Uh, it, this isn't the same one as the... Oh, no, this is Taylor. The other one was Scurby. Scurby yeah. is the one that he got on top of for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Setting Man. records. Setting records on turtlenecks. <laughs> yeah. um, 
but yeah, so let's go. Let's talk about before we get to David Blaine because that might just disappear off my notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's go Louis C.K. So Louis C.K. Uh, comedian, very crude comedian, yeah. very crude one of comedian. my favorites up until now. I yeah, guess, I uh, mean he he's been accused by female comedians, five women apparently. Yeah, that he that he would go up to them, ask them if they would allow him to masturbate in front of them, mm-hmm. and then would do it, right? But here's the interesting thing. The women said, yeah, sure, and the ones that said, yeah, sure, he did it in front of them, and towards the end, they laughed and walked out, <laughs> which <laughs> I'm sure is in one of his jokes somewhere. Yeah. But then the other one he asked, and she said, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to see that, and he just walked away, right? So... The interesting thing about this is, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah, but it was consensual. Yeah. So, uh, did you it's read really his whole weird. statement? Well, because they allowed me permission, I thought it would be okay, but I realize now it's not. Or well, something. well, what he said was, you know, uh, that I, that's what he claims was going on in his head. He asked permission, so he thought it was okay. But what was really happening was that he was you he was putting them in a position. To like, okay, he, this is a famous comedian. That's kind of where I want to be. If I don't say yes, what's going to happen? What to my the career? women are saying? Yeah, yeah. No, and he even admitted that too. He's like, I didn't realize this is what was happening, but it's what was happening. So, <clears throat> I mean, this whole thing is just weird, you know. Yeah. Like it's, it's. Um, I mean, at what point do you like? I understand that the, these women are saying like, I'm. It's, it's a. I'm afraid to come out, yeah, because of my career and backlash yeah. and things like that. But at some at some point, like at least what we want, would want to teach our daughters too is you know yep. that you come out right away, like you forget about the consequences, go right to the police right I'd away, say, no matter what, know? go right to the police. At at the when it gets to the point where it's thirty years later, like take that uh, was it Tom Wolf the who's the who's the the Governor? senator. No, no, and not our governor, Tom Wolf. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to put you know, Tom Wolf's name in the butt. No, but there's a guy in Alabama, apparently the guy okay. who's going to be taken over for Sessions, yeah, yeah. who 30 years ago, when he was yeah. 32, or there was a girl who was 14 or whatever, and um, so they talked about it on The View, and it was kind of like frustrating to listen to. Yeah. The View's always frustrating. Yes. Me. But because they were just like assuming guilt, like Roy immediately. Moore. Roy Moore, yeah. They are assuming guilt. <clears throat> And when you wait that long, you are putting yourself in a position where, okay, n- the there's no way to prove that this happened, mm-hmm. but you're going to smear someone's uh, someone's name. Yeah. Now, apparently, there are like four or five women in his case too, and they all have a similar story. So when and that they're happens, very detailed it, too. it's very detailed, and a lot of the details are the same. So yeah. it very much seems like this probably really did happen. But I also think that. It, with the divisiveness that's going on in the country now and, and all of the stuff with Hollywood coming out and all these actors, it, it seems like it's just every day. There's yeah, a it's person. a tidal wave. Yeah. There's a tidal wave. It's like prime time for a politician you don't like where you can just yeah. make up a story and think. So, yeah, it, he, it, he had run for multiple offices before. Why did it never come out? When, yeah. But here's a, here's, here's a response to that, and I, mm-hmm. I understand the response. A lot of women in a lot of these cases felt very insecure coming out with those details because they felt that they wouldn't be believed. Yeah. But now with all these big news stories, I yeah. feel like it may be believed. Yeah. And, and I, that makes sense. And I understand but. that. And if it did happen, you know, that's awful. Yeah. Um, and for, for, I'm just saying that this is like a, we've created a climate now where yep. we could just throw story. We're going to talk about one later in regards, to not sexual harassment, but in regards to race, where are these hoax stories, yep. you know? So you don't know what to believe. Something happened 30 years ago you don't know what you know what to do about it um and so like listening to the viewer they're like well you have to take all these seriously but then there's also such thing as innocent until proven guilty yes exactly you know and it's like you're just throwing one away to appease the other and it's like now where, with, what do we do yeah well with what we're doing now is that with so much media attention on everything and the social media and everything and public shaming and just accusing and without evidence just outright going and saying you're guilty what you're doing is having 
instead of a, a legal trial, a trial by peers. Yeah, yeah. You know? And yeah, you're going from guilty until proven innocent to innocent until proven guilty. And that's not the way our system yeah, has yeah. been worked. And with so many cases like all these racism things have these faux racism incidents mm -hmm. that have been happening since the Trump election, you know, we're talking about people's lives being ruined. Oh yeah. Here. And you know, it, it it, you don't take something like that lightly. Like you throw out an accusation, and if it's false, you could have ruined someone for life that was innocent. Take let's take Louis C.K. Now he has come out and actually admitted that this stuff right. has happened. But let's say yeah. he denied it. Yeah, his career is ruined. Yeah, for yeah. I mean, what he had a movie coming out. He had they a movie come it. out. They canceled it. FX has broken all ties. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, well, comedy I, clubs. Like I mean, what what is he gonna do now? I, I mean, obviously, he did it. And he admitted it, but if he hadn't, or what? If, what if someone really is innocent, and this dragging your name through the mud and is just the for sexual harassment and stuff like this is also the worst, like one of the mm -hmm. worst things aside from like stuff involving kids. You know? I almost, I almost feel like Louis C.K. is going to be all right. No. Uh, not, not to the star level that he was, but he's going to have to start over. He's not going to have his manager anymore. He's going to have to start back at lower end clubs and yeah. everything. And obviously, he's going to have to stay away from a big subset of jokes that he had always played to, because now you're talking about your own stuff. You can't do that now. You can't I talk about sexual things anymore. I think it's going to be tough, honestly. It's going to be real tough. For I, him. I, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in. <laughs> I mean. It is. There's loyal fans. It's I think. a. It's yeah, but it's it is a big thing that you you bring up. Like that's a big part of his yep. routine. Yeah. So where does he go from there? And just the stuff that, like, you hear all these gross stories, and now him saying it all happened. I yeah. mean, it's how does anyone like just separate? You he's know, he's married, right? He well, he was. I think he's divorced. But wow. I know he has daughters. <laughs> so weird. Oh my gosh! Like, uh, but I don't know. It'll be tough. But I don't know. It's just like, who's it going to be tomorrow? Oh you yeah, know, it's, it's going to be. Yeah. The, I mean, because this is also you're in an industry of powerful people and famous people that are probably expecting that women will just want to. Oh, you know who the one was today? I don't know. The uh, <laughs> showrunner Kreisberg. For all the CW shows, the Arrow, Flash, no way. yeah, like he's he's not associated with the shows right now. He's on he's suspended, pending uh, internal investigations. Oh, jeez, yeah, man, yeah. So he he was he was a showrunner on Arrow, Flash, uh, Supergirl, and Legends of Tomorrow. Wow, the whole Arrowverse. Yeah, yep, it's crazy. <sighs> so yeah, it just happened. It keeps on happening. Yep. This is nuts. Um, and it's cold. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, so on a related note, Scotland Yard detectives are investigating allegations of serious sexual assaults made by a second woman against David Blaine. I'm sorry that I'm laughing. I just keep on thinking <laughs> in the back of my head. I'm thinking of them arresting him and him going, and the cuffs are on them and, and everything. Yeah. Like all these like stupid magic tricks that he would just use to get out of the situation. Yeah. And then he would he go like this. in his cage. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? Gosh, this yeah. guy escaped from a floating ball filled with water. How are we going <laughs> to imprison him? He looks him? at me. He's like, am I really behind bars right now? Yeah. Is he? <laughs> yeah. And they go to reach in. <laughs> Where they is go to he? put him in a cell, and he's yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's looking at me. He's like, is it me who's in prison, or is it you? Wait, how did we get in here? <laughs> the tables have turned. So anyway, officers from the Metropolitan Police's Child Abuse and Sexual Offenses Command. Wow, M P C A S O C A B C spoke to the woman, a respected magazine editor and writer, after she came forward as a new alleged victim of the entertainer. The New York based journalist who asked not to be named told detectives the magician exposed himself and masturbated in front of her during an interview. Again, <laughs> what is with these guys? That's the weirdest thing. Like imagine just <laughs> interviewing someone and they're just like you know, doing their thing. And yeah. you're just like, uh. <laughs> I don't Do you know need where a to minute? Put my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what sent me into the kitchen, but it was either to get one or both of us a refill in her statement. The woman said the next thing 
out of his mouth was some version of just suck whatever it is for a few seconds when i returned to the living room just a few seconds yeah just never mind (laughs) blaine blaine was still on the couch where i'd left him but now his pants were open his penis was in his hand and he was going to town I think the first thing, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, just wait, it's it's a flower. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, What's in your other hand? Yeah. I'm holding his pants. How did this happen? <laughs> I think the first thing I said was, you need to put that away right now. And he asked something along the lines of, maybe you could give me a hand or don't you want to give me a hand? To which I replied, the guy in the next room thinks of me as family and he's packing. Are you insane? And the next thing out of his mouth was some version of just suck it for a few seconds. This is going back to what he said. Ugh, God. It's weird. He's creepy as it is. This is like power trip. Isn't he the one are. that like pulled a frog out of his stomach? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like the living aquarium trick or There's something always like, like that. him and Chris Angel. Is yeah. They, they get no, they yeah, have, like, Chris Angel weird. hasn't been around for a yeah, while, though. Yeah. He disappeared. <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> disappeared off the scene. Him and his wiener. They all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was an emo weirdo. Yeah, yeah. David Blaine, he just has that creepy stare yeah. and like uh, I don't monotone know. voice. Yeah. Ay, yeah, yeah. You just want to suck it for a second <laughs> <laughs> and stares. And at then the- it will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How did you man. do that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> kind of brings that that uh, line trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh boy jeez okay we'll keep going yeah hey let's move on to racism all right we have a bunch of stories concerning racism first up the california naacp wants congress to replace the racist pro-slavery national anthem you know how racist it is right oh yeah super racist you do right? well like third like yeah, and the like other verses or whatever well, I mean, every time you sing it, you know how racist it is, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so racist. <laughs> the NAACP passed a resolution in October calling the song one of the most racist pro-slavery, anti-black songs in American lexicon. That is pretty big of an accusation. <laughs> My word, you're going all out on that Yeah, you, uh, you put on any rap album and you hear the N-word like 50 times. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, but the, uh, the national anthem, super racist. So here's the, here's the lyrics in question, or in the third verse specifically. They say, their blood was washed out, their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. These lines are thought to refer to black American slaves who fought for the British during the War of 1812 in hopes of winning their freedom. Francis Scott Key, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, was a slave owner who, who opposed freeing the slaves. Which is is interesting. More so the fact of how and why the uh, Star Spangled Banner was written. If you actually look into that history. Um, I believe it was him and another person that were kept uh, as captives on a ship of the enemy and they had they watched out of like a crack in the ship at the war they were just about to be released back to the other side and then the war a war broke out right Mm -hmm. and all through the night was this war rockets red (laughs) yeah yeah exactly and uh they're watching it all unfold and they don't know who's winning right but they can see the stars and stripes there Yeah, yeah on 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 like up and waving, right? Yeah. And they knew as long as those were there that our side was still in the fight. And when it, the noise calmed down and everything, and they looked out in the morning, the flag was still there. So they knew that their side had won that yeah. battle. So he wrote this song, and it's just it's it's a really cool backstory to the whole thing and everything. Yeah. But um, a lot of people don't know that there's a fifth stanza to the uh, the Star Spangled Banner, and it seems to contrast that verse where it reads, when our land is illumined with liberty's smile, if a foe from within strike a blow at her glory, down, down with the traitor that dares to defile the flag of her stars and the page of her story, by the millions unchained who our birthright have gained, we will keep her bright blazon forever unstained, and the spar- Star Spangled Banner in triumph shall wave, while the land of the free is the home of the brave. So it's talking about the freeing of slaves and everything. Mm-hmm. Now that stanza was written later, 
Yeah. But it is still part of the national anthem now. Yeah. You know? So there uh, are not any not yet any legislative sponsors for the resolution, but there is one opponent, Assemblyman and gubernatorial candidate Travis Allen, who said, our flag and national anthem unite us as Americans. Protesting our flag and national anthem sows division and disrespects the diverse Americans who have proudly fought and died for our country. Real social change can only happen if we work together as Americans first. Yeah. Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. So while we continue along the same line here, a man from Dallas traveled all the way to Washington, D.C. with one mission, and that was to, quote, kill all white police at the White House. His plan was sabotaged before it got started, though, because he told on himself on social media. Michael Orega got to the nation's capital Monday, and he did something many travelers do on trips. He checked in on Facebook. <laughs> His social media activity, however, landed him on the Secret Service's radar. Here's what he posted leading up to his Facebook check-in at the White House. And this is exactly what he said, just so you know, I'm not <laughs> that I don't have bad grammar with this. <laughs> <laughs> nice, now nice. I am going to there to White House, make sure kill all white police. I remove the power of darkness from USA in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Put him on jail, Donald J. Trump, in mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so those. You gotta yell everything in caps. Yeah. No, I'd rather <laughs> not on that one. Uh, the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Department got wind of Arega's plans and alerted the Secret Service Protective in, um, Intelligence Division at about 3 p.m. on Monday. You look like you were about to say something. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Oh, okay. This is the guy, uh, uh, <laughs> hey guys, I think I got I think I got a live one here. <laughs> Somebody want to check they, out? <laughs> they got to Michael on social media. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who couldn't cut it in the field. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is Michael. Uh, I got a Facebook check in that you may want to check out. <laughs> Here's what he looks like. Said I'm sending the image to all your phones. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Oh, man. The Secret Service at the White House searched for Orega and arrested him an hour later on Pennsylvania Avenue. It took them an hour. That's crazy. Yeah. It's not clear how he was planning to kill all white police, or anyone for that matter, because he was unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. So, let's get into some of these hoax crimes here. A recent hate crime near Kansas State University, which prompted, yeah, hate <laughs> crime, uh, which prompted action from students has turned out to be another hoax. According to the Kansas City Star, the Riley County Police Department was called to an apartment complex near KSU last Wednesday. When they arrived, they found a black man's car covered in racist graffiti. The N-word was spray painted on the car several times, along with other derogatory statements like die, whites only, um, date your own kind, among others. The incident led black students on campus to organize and begin a dialogue about racism near the campus, which I can imagine it wasn't really a dialogue. It was probably just shouting and, and <laughs> demands. Yeah. University police also increased patrols and considered installing additional security cameras across the campus. The FBI even got involved in the investigation, likely because it appeared to be a hate crime, according to the Associated Press. You know how many people, minorities, uh, friends of mine that I've talked to, that have said that they don't believe a hate crime should be treated any different than it? It's still the same crime. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. stupid. You're you know? just, they're just putting a label on motive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's just the motive. Yeah, Every crime has a motive. Uh, but you know. <clears throat> so, according to the Star, the car's owner, 21-year-old Dontarius Williams, admitted to police this week that he was responsible for the graffiti. And despite filing a false police report, officials chose to not charge Williams for breaking the law because doing so would not be quote in the best interest end quote of the city's residents, according to the Star. Uh, before I want to I want to comment on that before we get to that though this is what William said in a statement I would like to deeply apologize to the community the whole situation got out of hand when it shouldn't have even started it was just a Halloween prank that got out of hand I wish I could go back to that night but I can't I just want to apologize from the bottom of my heart from for the pain and news I have brought you all I first of all I fail to see how it was a Halloween prank 
you know, because yep. I believe he probably reported it, was mm-hmm. the one that reported it. Well, that's not yeah. pranking. Yeah. You know? Pranking myself. But I want to I want to go. Be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got fooled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to the the that he gets off scot free. You know what I mean? Yeah. My personal feeling is like all these people that make fa- fake accusations of racism or sexual assault or rape mm-hmm. or anything like that. Like, listen, you should listen to everyone and their accusations yep. and investigate it. Everyone should be heard. Mm hmm. But it sounds crude, but I think we said it last week, not everyone should be believed. You need to investigate it, and it should be guilt or innocent until proven guilty, you yeah. know? But when you find out something like this, that someone faked something this big that caused a big scene and, and possibly riots in some of these cases and everything. And, uh, and just the resources that go into it, yep. the taxpayer dollars that yep. are being used, you know, to for all this, it, it should be some kind of some kind of crime. Yeah, well, here my personal feeling is that you should be you should have the same penalty that the person would have had had if they, it was true. If it was true. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know? You know? Absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy. like if that would have put someone in behind bars for ten years, that's what they should serve. Yep. Teach. It would teach everyone a lesson. Mm-hmm. You know, it would curb people from actually doing these faux incidents all the time mm-hmm. because this has been rampant the last year. Oh yeah. I mean, all over the place. Right with Trump from the election. Like, yep. It's like even before during the campaign. And boy, where is it all coming from? I don't see too many faux incidents from the right. Yeah. It's all on the left. Mm-hmm. And they just are so blind to the fact of where all this violence and everything is coming from. Yeah, yeah. The left has been gearing up and becoming so violent and hateful yeah. and doing all this fake stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And we're the ones that are the violent it's ones. In, it's in, like, I feel like there's different degrees of it, too. There are people that are just straight up lying, like knowing that yep. they're, you know, just trying to pin something on someone else when it's not true and then i also think that there are people that really do believe they're so sensitive that something that's not a crime they really feel like they've been you know some kind of violence has been perpetrated against them yeah they believe it yeah yeah they really think you know because they're so so sensitive you know that it's just you know it's i mean i don't know i don't know how you're going to get through life like that yeah honest to god like <clears throat> it's the same bubble wrap that you need to walk through a Walmart. <laughs> you yeah. need it around yeah, your, your feelings, too. Oh, bubble man. wrap your feelings. You know, uh, I believe it's Beck who says all the time, like, you have a right to feel uh, safe. You know, you sh- how does he say it? You, you don't have a right to uh, not feel uncomfortable, but you do have a right to not feel unsafe. Yeah. That's the way he puts it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like... If you're unsafe, that's a bad situation. You should always be safe, yeah. right? But there's a difference between being unsafe and being uncomfortable. If someone's saying that's something that you don't like and you're just uncomfortable, that's very different from being unsafe. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen to you because of words mm-hmm. or a presence of somebody, yeah. right? Yeah. Unless they're coming at you with a knife or a gun yeah, or something yeah. like that. And, and uh, Ben Shapiro talks about this all the time, too, that we've kind of fallen into this place where people really do feel like words are an act of aggression towards them that can be met with physical aggression in response. Yeah. That's justified. Yeah. Yeah. Which is wrong. You know, that's what these microaggressions and everything, it's it's just it's you know whatever happened to sticks and stones yeah. <laughs> break your bones with words will never hurt me. You know, oh, it's like man. people are it's, but and you know what you crazy. you sit here and you say they're so sensitive and it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And they take that as like a compliment. Yeah, I am sensitive. I'm super sensitive. I'm super super sensitive. Yeah. You need to handle me like a delicate flower. <laughs> My gloves back on. <laughs> it's did, getting colder. Did well for a while. We might have, we might have a short <laughs> podcast tonight. Uh, Lieutenant General Jay Silverias forceful speech against bigotry in the Air Force went viral. And I'm going to leave it at that. You may be familiar with this. Mm -hmm. So let's play this video that went viral within the last couple weeks. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have heard that some people down in the prep school wrote some racial slurs on some message boards. If you haven't heard that, I wanted you to hear it from me. 
If you're outraged by those words, then you're in the right place. That kind of behavior has no place at the prep school, it has no place at USAFA, and it has no place in the United States Air Force. You should be outraged not only as an airman, but as a human being. And I'll tell you that the appropriate response for horrible language and horrible ideas, the appropriate response is a better idea. So that's why I'm here. That's why all these people are up here on the staff tower. So let me have everybody who's up here, please pull forward to the rails. Also, there are so many people here, they're lining the outsides along the windows. These are members of the faculty, coaching staff, AOCs, AMTs, from the airfield, from my staff, from my headquarters. All aspects of the 10th Air Base Wing, all aspects that make up USAFA and the United States Air Force Academy. All right, he's, go he's going through a lot of stuff. Basically, he yeah. does a pretty good speech yeah. on racism and how it's not going to be tolerated within and the Air Force. You know, everything he said is 100% uh, true. Absolutely, and that's and, what was going to be the next thing I was going to say. You know, and, and uh, you know what? The kid who, well, do you want to say what happened? Yeah, first? yeah. Okay. So okay. it was faked. Yeah. So it basically, was there was incident. a cadet, I think a cadet or a student, that was in trouble at the school for other things. So to kind of take some heat off himself, he made himself a victim of racial slurs and along with other students as well. So if you ask, so then it came, kind of came out that the story was fake and uh, didn't happen. Did it tarnish what the guy said? Well, blah, blah, blah. and I don't think it did at all because what he no, said no. is one hundred percent true. Yeah, and Lieutenant I'll General. even go so far as saying it was still a racist thing to do. That kid used racism yeah. to as a tool as a tool to help himself. So that was just as racist on his part, you know, than it than it would have been on if it were, the, the the crime actually did happen. And I always kind of like really like I'm sure you've seen it the interview with Morgan Freeman with uh, the one guy where he yeah, said like stop racism. You don't talk about it. Yeah, you know I'm not. A black man, you're not a white man. I'm Morgan Freeman. You're, yeah, I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I'm Morgan yeah, Freeman. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm no longer a black man. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're not a white man. <laughs> so, but uh, that's, you know, so he, that kid did commit a racist, you know, crime yeah. or whatever, or broke the rules. Now, he got a heck of a lot more punishment than the other kid did in the other story because he's no longer a cadet. He's yeah, thrown out. Yeah, he got kicked out. And, and uh, rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It sounded like he was on his way out anyway if he was in trouble for, for other yep. stuff. You know? And the whole thing is with that, uh, like you said, it, it even with this being a faked incident, doesn't take away from the powerful words that this lieutenant general spoke. Oh, yeah, in not at all. No, he was 100% yeah. right. I yeah. mean, and, you know, I'm kind of, it, it makes me a little mad, and I'm sure it makes him a little mad that it, in, in a way, it makes it look bad bad on his part that he was responding to a fake incident yeah. but i think m the majority of people understand that yeah. he was taking the correct action sure ha yeah. uh, under the circumstances and it was a real incident it's just not yeah. what we thought it was exactly you know yeah. and um and and these people don't understand too they're, they're so stupid right that they don't understand that they are delegitimizing future true Racial crimes, yes. or sexual crimes, or anything. Like that. Anytime you make up a story and then it comes out that it was fake, you're now planting that seed of doubt when you hear stories in the future. Now, oh, this is probably BS, just like that other thing, you mm -hmm. know. So, and everything should be treated as innocent until proven guilty, like we were talking about. But you're now throwing in this like kind of salt on the wound of like, ah, oh, this this is probably just fake or whatever. So yeah. they're they're they're. They're um, hurting their own cause. Yeah, but I think that's know? been happening for years, especially oh, in regards yeah. to politically. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that the right just is, it's endless. No matter what you do, you're racist. Yeah, yeah. Like it, you just disagree on policies, you're racist. Oh, man, I you see know? it all the time. But brought up like, uh, well, the, anybody who voted for Trump is racist, sexist. And even when the numbers are thrown out, the more black people voted yeah. for, for Trump than they did for Mitt Romney and, and McCain or more... 48% of women voted for Trump. Ah, oh, that's still a uh, misogynist. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, this yeah. many Latino women and men voted for Republican. Oh, well, don't they you, don't know what they're talking about. Don't uh, you feel, though, over the years it's become a lot more like water off the back? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I used to, I used to get worked up. Like, no, I'm not a racist. And like, you have to feel like you defend yourself. Oh, yeah. Like anymore, you're like, you're Whatever. an idiot. 
You're yeah. an idiot. Like I, you know, come to me with facts. Mm -hmm. Come to me with evidence I'm a racist. I told you this last week. They don't like that. I know. I know. They don't like statistics and I, numbers and facts and real tangible evidence. Once it get, gets warmer out again, I'll wear my green uh, shirt that says, uh, <laughs> how, to, uh, how to piss off a liberal, use facts. Yeah, they don't like that. <laughs> no. but uh, And yeah, you're right. It's also just like someone says, ah, I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I know yeah. it's okay, not Okay, so you don't want to have an intelligent debate. You want to go to demeaning character and attacking each other personally. I'm not going to participate in that. Yeah, yeah. If you actually want to talk on the merits of the conversation of the topics and debate policy and stuff like that and mm -hmm. look past the person who's doing the policies, I will do that with you. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, I, I, I will say they're an idiot, but I'll stop there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in regards to this one, the racist messages were discovered in September against several minority candidates in the Air Force. The messages read, go home, N-word. While the incident inspired a heartfelt rebuke from Silveria that went viral, Tuesday it was revealed that one of the black cadets that had written the messages himself, the cadet admitted to writing the messages himself according to the authorities investigating the matter at the school. The cadet is no longer at the school, but officials declined to say whether he was expelled or left of his own volition. Volition. Uh, Silveria was clear and adamant that bigotry and racism would not be tolerated in the Air Force in a speech that was spread far and wide by many who agreed with his statements. If you can't treat someone from another race or different color skin with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then get out. Mm -hmm. He kind of repeated himself. Yeah, yeah. That. He repeated it over and over again with different, slightly different yeah. comments. But I feel like if you ever <laughs> see the N-word like used just based on... <laughs> How it's used in everyday society. I figure there's probably a small chance it's a white person to begin with. A white person what? That, that, that actually said it or used it, you know? Because it's, it's so widely used in the ethnic Entertainment, community. Entertainment, yeah. yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like, if I, if I hear it used, it's probably not a white person. It might oh, be, yeah, yeah, But no, it's probably yeah. not a white person. Yeah. yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I don't hear it that much anymore from anyone. Yeah. Which is a good thing. I yeah, don't think yeah. anyone should be using it. Mm -hmm. I, I know the whole theory behind the power, it's our word taking now. the power and everything back, whatever. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't it be more powerful to just extinguish it altogether? Yeah. <laughs> so sports <laughs> broadcasting behemoth ESPN will be laying off over 100 employees, including some on-air talent, after the Thanksgiving holiday, please according Max to a Keller, report please Max by Sports <laughs> Illustrated. So ESPN is owned by Disney. Yep. And I find that fascinating because... Disney has been getting heat for a long time for like their ridiculous politics and everything, especially on ESPN. They mix in politics and go off on political rants oh that have nothing to do with sports. Yeah, yep. You know, and they actually says that here. Uh, what was the woman's name? Jamel Hill. Yeah, I guess I didn't throw it in there. It says the network. Just yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the network signature show Sports Center will be particularly affected as several anchors could be fired. ESPN was reported to be firing around forty to sixty employees back in October, according to Sporting News, but that figure has since grown. This is the latest in an ongoing trend at ESPN, which laid off around five percent of its workforce in twenty fifteen, or about three hundred employees. So three hundred back then, and they're looking at another hundred now. Then in April, ESPN cut it around 100 journalists and on-air personalities. So, wow. So 400, 500, 500 people. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. A necessary component of managing change involves constantly evaluating how we best utilize all of our resources, and that sometimes involves difficult decisions, said a company statement. Wow, does that sound familiar? That's straight out from the blaze. Yeah. You know, with, with Beck's company, like... He's, he just laid off a bunch of people down there, and they said it was because of change in the industry. And, like, you got to keep up, and you have to do these different things. And it doesn't I – don't, I don't know. You know, I don't have the insight behind the scenes on, on how that industry is changing. I have my own ideas since mm -hmm. I threw some marketing ideas at them and everything. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, like other networks, ESPN is affected by the changing habits of cable consumers, most notably cord cutters. After seeing, after being seen in 100, 100 point. 13 million households in 2011, ESPN reaches only 87.5 million today. ESPN may also be affected by declining NFL ratings. However, the network's Monday night football ratings were up slightly over the season's first seven weeks, according to Sports Business Daily. 
So right there, there's some industry changes right there, is uh, people that are getting rid of cable, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also a big one for ESPN is that Monday Night Football, you know? Yep. And if, <laughs> if you have this whole kneeling controversy with people that have seriously turned off the sport, mm -hmm. you know, this, this wasn't... I don't want to get back into that controversy again because yeah, yeah. it's a whole other topic. But, you know, it had the reverse effect. You, you thought that you were going to be spotlighting uh, the differences that you have and, you know, this problem in the, um, in the community with police officers and everything. But you lost your message mm -hmm. because you pissed off uh, the American people in regards to a patriotic symbol yep. instead of instead of working at a different angle you yep. know and now they've completely tuned out they have literally completely yeah. tuned out yep yeah my one of my best friends I was, I was talking to his mom and she was saying that he doesn't watch football anymore and he's a veteran um from the army and works he's the one that works with the, the yeah. squad team in buffalo and like he just doesn't watch football anymore He's like, he's like, you know, he knows that that's not what their point was, but he doesn't care. Like, no. they still are disrespecting, you know, um, symbols of the, of the country. Yeah. Yeah. So. So many people tune out in such a great season for the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> the one season they do Nobody good, cares. no one's watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, okay, so Michigan is one step closer to allowing concealed carry in schools and churches. Oh, this is an interesting topic. I have some things to say about this. Mm -hmm. So according to The Blaze, the Michigan Senate passed legislation on Wednesday that would allow concealed pistol license holders to carry in traditional gun-free zones. CPL holders with at least eight hours of additional training or those who are certified firearm instructors could get an exemption on their license exempting them from gun-free zones such as schools, daycares, churches, stadiums, college dormitories, hospitals, casinos, and the legislation would also close a loophole that allows for open carry and gun-free zones, but not concealed carry. Open carry, so you have, it has to be showing. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get to the last topic tonight being the church shooting and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I pity the person that tries coming into our church to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to make it very far. There's a lot of carrying members mm -hmm. of church, many churches around here. Yeah, yeah. No matter where we go, like you're out in the country here. You, yeah. <laughs> not a good idea. Yeah. Um, school districts could still make rules prohibiting staff and students from carrying concealed weapons. Well, I don't think students should be carrying yeah, them. Yeah. You know, first but of all, staff. like, listen, I'm all pro Second Amendment, but I, even I have my restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Staff, I actually believe in in having teachers have the ability to have a gun in school. Yeah, I mean, you're you're it's in a, in essence a, f a flock of those sheep, and and mm -hmm. you're protecting them, yeah. the shepherd. You know. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you know, I don't think that you should just be able to get a license as, as easily as I had, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a teacher. I think that there should definitely be uh, ongoing training, a certain amount of hours that you have to hit. And I think that there should be a psychological evaluation sure. uh, of your of yourself before you're able to carry into a school environment. That should happen before you can become a teacher, if you ask me. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> the, honestly, a lot of these yeah. boxes should be checked already. Yes. They should just be able to hand a gun yes. to a teacher. All this other stuff should be done. <laughs> you know, um, I know that if I want to, um, if I want to volunteer to like chaperone on a, few, on a field trip or do anything in school, I got to do background checks and everything. It's all got to be done. You know, so yeah, to become a teacher, you should have to do all that and then some. Uh, you, they should be able to like, I'm a, te yeah. I'm a teacher. Yeah, <laughs> can yeah. I have a gun? Okay. Yes. yes, we know you're good. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta do the We'd training. have to get a lot rid of a lot of teachers, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not a bash on all teachers. I, yeah, yeah. I, I personally, I personally pity teachers in this country oh, yeah. that are under an oppressive thumb of federal control that are unable to teach creatively anymore. Yep. You know, and that's a whole other topic. Yeah, like we still have Common Core. That was like one of the main things I wanted a Republican to win was to get rid of that. Yep. <laughs> nope. How's that wall coming? Yeah. How's Obamacare doing? Yep. Yeah, he's doing great. Private property owners could still ban guns on their premises. Well, yeah, that's you come into my house. If I don't want you to have a gun, you either leave or you put it out in your car. Like yeah, that's, that's kind of my choice as a homeowner, you yeah. know. 
Uh, universities could regulate carrying of guns on their campus using their constitutional powers. The bill will go to the state house for a vote sometime after Thanksgiving. If it passes the house, it's unclear how Governor Rick Snyder will decide on the issue. Any more about uh, the gun issue? I mean, I, I feel like gun-free zones. If I was, if I, if 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 someone were to target an area to go do a mass shooting, I feel like a gun-free zone would be my top pick. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, you know, I don't know what good they do, honestly. I mean, I think there, there's got to be rules, like you were saying, too, like students shouldn't have them or anything like that. But, I mean, what is a gun-free zone other than a sign that just says, hey, come shoot yeah. here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Seriously, it's so bad. Uh, speaking of bad, <laughs> Keith Olbermann showed up on The View and says that Trump is worse than bin Laden. And Meghan McCain, of all people, is the one that has to educate him on that. So let's take a look at he's so he's such a snobby prick. You you also recently got into a bit of a Twitter thing with Donald Trump Jr. Oh my. Um a lot of people are of course frustrated by Trump's reaction to the terror attack here in New York. Mm -hmm. Um but you said recently uh, via tweet that Trump and his family have done more damage to America than bin Laden and ISIS combined. Yes. Do you believe that? Yeah, we're, we're, we did really well after 9-11. I don't think we, the country has given itself enough credit for what we did not do after 9-11. We, we did not restrict all of the freedoms in this country. We did not yeah. single out people. We yeah. did not destroy the fabric. people died on 9-11. Yes. I mean, the comparison is absurd. Well, do you mean the time well, after? But, then, but more people died in the Iraq war than died in 9-11, and we didn't need to be there. You think that bin Laden did less to damage America than President Trump? Yes. Can I tell you something? When I hear rhetoric like what? that, I want, I think Whoopi and I are in agreement that we want Americans to come together. And rhetoric like that is so damaging. And by the way, my brother fought in the Iraq war and deployed numerous times. So before we start tit for tatting, there's a lot of service in my family. Yes. So I don't understand when you're saying things like that. Bin Laden was dedicated to the destruction of all everything that we hold dear in our freedom. So when you Perhaps compare some people it to think that, Trump is dedicated yeah. to the destruction I believe of, I'm asking of things the question. Too. I believe I'm asking you. Well, that actually was my question. Okay, so what's okay, your answer? Well, somebody asked well, the damn question. Right, what's the question? <laughs> what's the question? The question is, my question the question is, is do you honestly believe no, that? Right. Why is no. you're making a, uh, you're saying no. that going into Iraq was worse than what bin Laden did on 9 11, so, is what you said. Yeah, and that's you a believe that. off. Yeah. I do, and it's not about disrespecting the troops in the slightest. But or, or the servicemen, or your father's service, which astounds me well, to this day that he was able to, to do that. And his service to this country right now astounds me, and I applaud him. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying the Iraq war was not, was, was, a, was a waste of these people's lives, and it was unnecessary. From your perspective. Well, I think, I think history suggests that we... The, the two things didn't have anything to do with one another. How do people like us find common ground? Because I'm not interested in this sort of like, because we disagree vehemently on our outlook on the world. And I'm I'm so tired of, of this kind of rhetoric and I'm tired of it on the right as well. I'm exhausted with it. I think most, most Americans can. Do you want President Trump to fail? Do you want America to fail? Because I'm- It cut out there and everything. I don't know why I'll try to include the full clip later on, but um. It, I think the one thing that she steps up and, and does great is, like, listen, like, both sides don't want to go to war with each other, but this rhetoric gets worse and worse and worse. We're talking about these fake crimes and mm -hmm. everything, and, like, the rhetoric in this country. And, you know, especially, like I've been saying for months now, these... The, coming from the left, the people that have always said tolerance, love, mm. not hate, and, yeah. and uh, nonviolence and everything, but they're doing the exact opposite. Like, things just keep on getting more and mm -hmm. more heated. Like, where do we find that common ground? Well, it was a great question. Yeah. And I, I'm interested in hearing what he had to say on that, but no, nothing Olbermann, of substance. Nothing of substance, because he, yeah. is, he is a fire thrower, uh, bomb thrower and everything. Mm. And on Twitter, I mean, his, <laughs> all he does is curse out people. Like yeah. f you f you f you like, he's he's that kind of kid that believes that cursing is uh, what you need to do to get the attention that you want, you know, yeah. to make the headlines and everything. Yeah, yeah. That that whole comment, it's just so asinine. Like it's, it doesn't even really, like it's it's not worth talking to someone like that. You know, I mean, what you're are talking you talking about? The yeah, which, just Trump is worse than Bin Laden, and yeah. like I mean, you're talking about. 
the 3,000 people that lost their lives and all of the families that were affected directly. And then when he brings up, well, more people died in the Iraq war. Well, why did we go to the Iraq war? Because it was a response to 9-11. And who killed the soldiers in the Iraq war? Was it Trump? Or was yeah. it, you know, yeah, terrorists why, on why, the other side that were killing that them? Was, so like, that was going to be my next question yeah. is like, uh, Trump is worse than bin Laden. And then she starts arguing that. Do you really believe that? Well, uh, more people died in the Iraq war than in uh, 9-11. What the hell does Trump have to do with the Iraq war? Let's Yeah, and let's even... Nothing! And let's even say, he said tr- Trump is worse than bin Laden and ISIS combined. Yes. I mean, you're just dealing with a total idiot. Yes. You're just a total <laughs> moron. So like, it's like, he's saying things to get attention. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Because he's he's and irrelevant you anymore. Brought he's a, up he's a, a five-minute video thing on GQ, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, and you brought up a great point upstairs, too, that I didn't even think about. He says, they say that, and then all these people in the crowd start clapping. Yeah. Citizens of New York City yes. just start clapping. Yep. Like, what the hell is wrong with people? <sighs> I feel like they're just so brainwashed in their own, like, you know, political viewpoint that nothing, it, you, you can't just get through to them at all. Well, like, it's, that's always been my problem with the view anyway, is that it's so overweighted in the political uh, balance towards the left that it's not challenging to them. You know, yeah. it's a it's a perfect echo chamber for each other's opinions. Yeah. That's it. No one's really challenged. Yeah. Even the conservative they, voice now, which now is Meghan McCain. I mean, like they had Donna Brazil on. Did you see any of that? No. So they had her on and they were asking. Donna Brazil was like, well, one thing for sure, I'm just going to be uh, the D next to my name. is going to stand for, for dance party, not for for Democratic Party, because I'm not going to be in the politics anymore after this. Blah, blah, blah. And then Meghan like, is asking her a question, like, did you really think that it was rigged? Oh, I never used rigged in the book, but then I saw the actual expert where she did, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and this and that, and she just wasn't like, you know, wanting to put any blame on Clinton that she did in her statement, which is using to sell books. And I'm like, you know, you're the conservative voice. Why are you pressing this like yep. more? Like this is so easy. Because look what happened in Jebediah, 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 yeah, Jedediah of course. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you step on that party line she, too hard, you'll yeah. get the boot. She pressed against Hillary, and yeah. the executives were like, whoa, hold on a second, because we want Hillary coming back on the show. Yeah, they still love Hillary. I mean, even when that whole thing was coming out, they were the only ones that, that were still like, oh, well, well, this is what happens. Everyone does opposition research, oh. and everyone does this, and oh, well, she she bailed out the DNC. She was this saint. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, my <laughs> God. Like I was like, are you serious? And I just wanted to be like... Why don't, you, why don't you tell this lady, listen, yes, you should stand for the dance party because you sure can dance around a question. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I'll tell but you what. I want to go back to what I was saying about the echo chamber of opinions yeah. and everything. Not only is it an echo chamber of opinions on the panel itself, but the audience is always just there to <laughs> to gobble up their crap, right? Yeah, and so there's no challenge for them. Like when you're a comedian or you're a, an entertainer of some sort, it takes courage to stand and give a joke that is going to go and be abrasive towards the audience yeah. or an opinion that is. Yeah. And they just get a complete echo chamber. Yeah, yeah. Blood. Megan McCain actually made a joke once. She said something, you know, conservative. And one person clapped and she was like, the one conservative person in the audience. She actually said that. It was pretty funny. Yeah, thanks to the one conservative person yeah. in the audience. I would love to, you know how those shows, It's a, you you basically get free tickets to those shows? Did you mm-hmm. know that? You, like at the end of the, the credits, it normally says, for tickets to the viewer to, to go yeah. Brian. You want to go up sometimes? Oh, you I and I? To. And just the whole time. Boo! <laughs> Boo! We'd get I thrown wonder, out so fast. I wonder fast. if you could find out who's going to be on. We'd get thrown out so fast. It would be, you know, it's a pre taped show. It would never make I it on TV. find other things to do in New yeah. York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that would be so funny. That would be so great. Go up and meet him. Like, hey, listen, I'm the Generation Y conservative. If you want to have me on the panel, and we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll go toe to toe with whatever stupid guests you have yeah. on. Probably doesn't know what the heck they're talking about anyway. Oh, anyway, uh, the Daily Wire, among others, reported this week. This is a great story. I don't know if you've seen like the rounds of this with all the like Photoshop stuff, but they reported this week that USA Today released a video on Tuesday aimed at making people scared of AR-15 rifles following the tragic mass shooting at the church in Texas on Sunday by showing an AR-15 with a special modification, mm-hmm. a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's take a look quickly at that video.
man. Okay, so they're going through the initial. The initial part of the video is is really funny to me. Like they're going over the features of an assault rifle, like the butt stock and <laughs> the, parts. the grip, and guard. the two sights, and trigger. the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> like basically any gun has yeah, you know what i mean yeah. and then they go into all these possible modifications <laughs> chainsaw oh bayonet. my gosh the chainsaw bayonet like <laughs> you gotta be kidding me they may have been thinking of something from a video game yeah gears of war gears of war with the chainsaw lancer which you're seeing on the screen yeah, right now good old chainsaw lancer <laughs> marcus Venus. Yeah. you know who likes that coltrane yeah. coltrane baby whoa yeah, that's right. <laughs> ben will like that one <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so this is this is the uh, what you're the gun that you're seeing there is a gun from um the gears of war franchise and i'm willing to bet that's where they got it from yeah you know what i mean like mm-hmm. It's so bad, the, the Photoshop job, too, and everything. <laughs> Cliff Blazinski saw that video, and he's like, yeah. I made that. Yeah. <laughs> that was my idea. I mean, I thought of that. What a crappy version of my idea. Yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't it? Like, it's not as on. cool in real life. <laughs> Let's take this to realistic ends here and think about it. It would have to be a big enough attachment to include a fuel tank as well. <laughs> the pull cord. The pull cord and everything. <laughs> like you guys even, pulling it, it's like ah, like you it. wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, Shoot, seriously. Shoots himself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, it's like weighted. Like yeah. like just trying to aim, you just keep on shooting down and everything. Like my word, oh, it's God. so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, so okay, so those that's the beginning part. Then they get to the possible modifications, and they go over all these things. And they they talk about <laughs> like these regular modifications, like okay, the killer had a red dot sight and a two point suspension sling. <laughs> that sling will get you. <laughs> he could have strangled someone yeah. with that. <laughs> and uh, what was it? A foregrip. Yeah. Um. It, this is all stuff that like I have on my AR. Mm-hmm. Oh, not that I have an AR. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But but the, these things are are minor minor modifications that are just nothing. They're nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like where the hell did this <laughs> chainsaw bayonet even come from? <laughs> it like comes from so far out of left field. Yeah. The worst. So so I wanted to get your opinion. What what are some uh, modifications that would scare liberals even more than what was in the video here? Uh, maybe a flamethrower mod. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking just an NRA sticker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> NRA sticker on it. Yeah. What about uh, like an insult thrower? Yeah, yeah, insult thrower. <laughs> uh, Pepe the Frog sticker yeah. <laughs> on the on the buttstock. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, someone just someone put uh, like the image of of a person. I forget who it was, but it was really funny. It was like Ben Shapiro or something as a possible <laughs> yeah. attachment. Milo, yeah, yeah. Milo, <laughs> Trump Pence My bumper word. sticker on the hand. <laughs> uh, how about how about uh, flashlight? Yeah. Oh, that's that a, flashlight. That's, that's scary yeah, stuff. Yeah. There. I Super mean, you could scary. S- then you could start shooting in the dark, and mm-hmm. now you're never you're never safe. Yeah, they can shoot the lights out first, <laughs> yeah. then start. Shooting. Yeah, and not only that, but you could put it onto the blinking, flashing mm-hmm. mode, mm-hmm. and cause epileptic mm-hmm. seizures too. So <laughs> without even shoot firing a shot, yeah. bastards. <laughs> oh, this oh, is so bad. Blinding with going their victims. Through. Yeah. I feel like my toes um, are going to fall off. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah, seriously. And I have thermal socks on. <laughs> I know. Um, we're almost done with it. Uh, so Senator Rand Paul will have an extended absence from the Senate as he recovers from an attack. On Friday, Senator Rand Paul was attacked by a neighbor as he was mowing his lawn. The senator suffered six broken ribs, a pleural effusion, which is excessive fluids around the lungs, after he was tackled from behind. I also heard he not, got some teeth knocked out. Yeah, this was pretty brutal. It was like. really brutal. Yeah. Uh, there was some speculation that the vicious attack was political. No kidding. Yeah. Paul is Republican and his neighbor is a Democrat, but Matthew J. Baker, a lawyer for the alleged attacker, Renee Boucher, said there was um, merely a, a dispute over a trivial matter and that it had absolutely nothing to do with either's politics or political agendas. 
by Monday, the New York Times had all but concluded that the attack was not political. Is landscaping drama at the root of Rand Paul's assault was the headline for the paper. GQ magazine, where Olbermann is, used the Times story as a vehicle to write a piece titled, Rand Paul Sounds Like the Worst Guy to Have as a Neighbor. Yeah, Rand really? Paul of yeah. the two. Yep. Well, it turn, they wrote, well, it turns out that Rand Paul is a bit of an a-hole about his yard, the GQ author wrote, not so gentlemanly. But a new report says all that might be wrong. The Bowling Green, Kentucky neighbor who allegedly attacked Senator Rand Paul last weekend, causing six broken ribs, was aggressively anti-Trump, anti-GOP in his social media, calling for the impeachment of the president and urging Russian investigator Robert Mueller to fry Trump's gonads. The Washington <laughs> Washington Examiner wrote, noting Bosher was also a fan of the hashtag Never Trump movement. Seven neighbors in the River Green gated community told uh, told secrets Wednesday. The probably the Secret Service Wednesday at the Pauls are friendly homeowners who kept their property tidy. The stories of a landscaping dispute or a dispute of any sort between Rand Paul and Renee Bauscher are erroneous and unfounded. The reason for Mr. Bauscher's bizarre attack is known only to him. Statements to the contrary are irresponsible and unnecessary, said a neighbor, uh, Travis Creed. He also added, speculation regarding Bauscher's motive has led to an unfair characterization, uh, characterization of the Pauls in their home. The Pauls are and always have been great neighbors and friends. They take pride in their property and maintain it accordingly. Rand was enjoying working on and maintaining his lawn for a, as long as I have known him. Sources say that Senator Paul uh, has been told that his attacker could face federal charges for the incident that broke six of his ribs. The report also indicates that the attacker might have been politically motivated. Bauscher is already charged with fourth-degree assault, causing minor injury, and faces up to a year in jail over it. He would face further punishment if, if federal charges are pressed. Paul's chief political strategist, Doug Stafford, told the uh, Wall Street Journal on Monday that the senator's injuries are far more severe than initially thought. Paul had uh, five broken ribs originally, three of which were displaced and could require surgery, and then it turned into six broken ribs. The senator is also suffering from bruises on his lungs, and Paul's staff did not say whether all the injuries are to one lung or to both. It's not clear when the senator will be able to return to work in Congress. The lung contusions don't necessarily sound serious, but these kinds of injuries could lead to respiratory ailments, internal bleeding, or damage to other internal organs if not treated properly. He got messed up. He got really messed up. <laughs> what were you gonna say? <laughs> messed up. <Yeah. laughs> but the fact is, like, he was blindsided. Yeah. This wasn't a fight. This was like uh, he was attacked uh, without it even seeing it coming and yeah. everything. Because I saw the other guy in court, and he didn't have any bruises or anything at yeah, all. Yeah. You know, which tells me like Rand Paul's not a wimp. You know yeah. what I mean, and you give him a fighting chance. He's gonna he's gonna get through a few hits in. He's a libertarian. Yeah. That's yeah, the, yeah. that's the way they are. You know, yeah, yeah. but this guy completely blindsided him. It's obviously political, and if it's political, attacking a U.S. senator, federal charges going against him, he's gonna be put away for a while. And I hope it happens. Yeah, and plus, if we learned anything from that student last week that we loved, yeah. It has politically motivated. Yeah, he's a terrorist. terrorist. <laughs> yep. yeah, he's a terrorist. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so we'll get, we'll get going through this. Our main topic for the for my the toes night. are about to fall yeah. off. <laughs> Our main topic for the night is a mass shooting at the church in Texas. At least twenty six people were killed in the incident, including a two year old girl. And the fourteen year old adopted Ugh. daughter of the pastor. Elderly couple, this is the horrible one too. First of all, the whole thing's really oh, yeah, obviously. But an elderly couple, Joe and Clarice uh, Holcomb, lost nine family members. Oh yeah, I saw. Um, I, I hadn't seen like the victim list, but I saw someone had gone and put out crosses um, with everyone's name, and I remember seeing Holcomb, 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 like four or five of them in a row. Yeah, and I was like, oh geez, this is like a whole family got yeah. wiped out. Uh, they Jeez. lost nine family members in Sunday's tragic church shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas. Despite the couple losing their son and his wife, as well as four grandchildren and three great-grandchildren, the Holcombs have held fast to their faith. Joe, 86, told the website that he and his wife are very close to God and believe that there will be a time when he and his wife are reunited with their lost family members. It takes a lot to say 
you know, to keep it strong in that oh situation. You just lost everyone that you Whew. watched them go through everything. They yeah. were there f- with you for every life event, the birth of all these people. And mm-hmm. like they say, you should never have to bury someone like your your kids, your kids. or anything. You kids, know? grandkids, great grandkids. Jeez, I mean, that's like your whole lineage. Lineage, yeah. like you know, I don't know. The Texas massacre that unfolded on Sunday was perpetrated by a man who should not have been allowed to buy any guns, but a clerical error led to his being easily armed. He had a long list of violent incidents in his life, but one in particular should have prevented him from buying guns. In 2012, Kelly was convicted for domestic assault against his then wife and her son. Under U.S. law, his right to buy guns should have been taken away after that. He literally took his, like, one-year-old, uh... Yeah, fractured skull. Her kid, fractured the skull, and said that he did it on purpose. Yep. This guy was a sick, twisted piece of crap. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. Although Kelly should have been banned from buying guns, NPR's Tom Bowman reported that the U.S. Air Force neglected to report the conviction on a national database. This was mishandled by the Air Force Office of Special Investigations at Holloman uh, Air Force Base in New Mexico, where Kelly was serving when he was arrested. An investigation is now underway, and the Air Force is taking it very seriously, said the one source. Authorities on Monday revealed that they had reason to believe that Sunday's mass shooting at a church in the Texas stemmed from a domestic dispute. Freeman Martin, Texas Department of uh, Public Safety Regional Director, told reporters during a Monday press conference that Kelly sent threatening text messages to his mother-in-law who attended services at First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. So his ex-mother-in-law was basically supposed to be there, and she wasn't even there when he went there. And he just went... Uh, from what I understand, he started shooting outside, and then he went inside and started shooting. So that would, it's actually a pretty sick but calculating way to keep everyone inside the church. Mm-hmm. You know, if you start firing inside the church, they're all going to start huddling inside, not going outside and running out. So yep. then you go in, and they're just in there waiting, essentially. Mm, yep. It's horrible. Uh, uh, In another development, authorities also believe that Kelly fatally shot himself after a high-speed pursuit. Martin also revealed that Kelly, who was wounded by a good Samaritan outside the church, had phoned his father during the chase, telling him that he wasn't going to make it. George Cesare... Sicari Elia, Sicari, yeah, whatever. (laughs) Mar, a teacher at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Oh, this is the guy... That has been in trouble multiple times for opening up his big mouth. Um, Commented during an interview with Democracy Now! on Monday, claiming white entitlement as a factor in the killings. Whiteness is never seen as a cause in and of itself of these kinds of massacres, he told host Amy Goodman. Like, what an Mm a-hole. This guy's put his foot in his mouth many times before. The 38-year-old educator contends that whiteness is a structure of privilege and it's a structure of power and a structure that, when it feels threatened, lashes out. (laughs) Yeah, because no one else shoots guns at people. Yeah. Asked by Daily Mail Online what point he was trying to convey in the interview, Marr said that many white males are raised with a double sense of entitlement since being both white and male are structures of power and dominance over non-white and female others. When that power is perceived to be threatened, as Donald Trump and other racist misogynists encourage people to believe, the results can be incredibly dangerous. So what's the excuse for all of the... African American people being murdered by African Americans in Chicago yep. hundreds and hundreds of year. What's their what's the excuse? Yeah. I think it's thousands. Thousands. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's crazy. Freaking war zone. <laughs> Last month, uh, Marr was placed on an administrative leave from Drexel University due to safety concerns after blaming Trumpism and white victimization in the days after a previous shooting in Las Vegas that left 58 people dead. This guy, I didn't even hear about that incident Mm -hmm. with him. He has been in the news multiple times. I can't believe Drexel still uh, keeps him on staff. Like this guy's a, uh, you know what it is? Probably tenure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he probably can't lose his job. It's yeah. unbelievable. This guy, that guy, is a, a real piece of crap, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at this. This is pretty interesting here. Um, this is an image that from Occupy Democrats, and 
a friend posted it and and like i say you know i i take things that friends have posted and use them in the podcast without actually mentioning their names because i'm not trying to blast my friends or anything you know and and, yeah. and make a fool out of them or anything but i thought i found this one interesting so this is a picture of the killer in in houston texas that went into the church it says this is devin kelly from houston texas today he killed at least 25 churchgoers it's actually 26 they probably didn't want to say it because the one was the baby still in the womb and they don't want to admit that yeah. if you're an occupied democrat person probably uh, he's not a Muslim. He's not an ISIS. This AR-15 rifle was his Facebook cover photo. America, this is what a terrorist looks like. And you know what I wrote underneath that What's on my that? friend's post? What's that? What were his political motivations? Yep. <laughs> yep. And I said, and then I followed that up with, I maybe I didn't hear something, but what are his political... Funny enough, no one's answered me on that one yep. yet. And that was at the beginning of the week. Yep. Did, did you have to specify? Because maybe they don't know. No, no, no. Just by, I was going to specify afterwards. By yeah. definition, uh, for it to be a terrorist uh, attack, yeah. there has to be a political motivation. This, this is listen. I, maybe your friend is smarter than the dictionary, though. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> the, this is also a friend of mine who I love dearly. He's a he's like uh, yeah. he's a brother of mine, you know, and like great personality great human being and everything completely leftist though like it's it, it's a miracle that we're even friends you know you should have just posted a picture of yourself with your ar that you may or may not own and be like, <laughs> stop calling me a terrorist <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing like it, it, he's 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 the same type of person that i'm always talking about and, and in the back of Is my he head the one that went with us to guardians uh, i can't say that okay i can't can't say that can't confirm or deny. Yeah. yeah. But but here's the thing is like in the back of my head when I'm talking about my liberal friends, he's at the forefront of my of my mind when I talk about all these people that mm -hmm. like you'll watch their posts come up on Facebook like like uh, really neat stories, love. I love this and like yeah. love and tolerance and then F Trump, I hate this administration, stupid Trump voters and everything, and then back to love and, and yeah. all love and tolerance. And, and yeah. it's like these posts just keep on going. It's yeah. back and forth, and you're like, you are contradicting yourself like no one's business. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. To say so. that this is what anything looks like, I mean... Aren't, we, aren't they like you know? Yeah. Don't judge a book by its yeah. cover. Don't yeah. don't Try judge me by the color of my skin. Yeah. Don't judge. Me. <laughs> Look at the content of the character. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just found that pretty interesting. That makes too much sense. Yeah, we don't want to make sense. We don't want to use facts. No. It doesn't make any. No. You know, can't do that at all. Yeah. So maybe I'll have some more funnier topics next week. Mm -hmm. We had we had some good ones, but I think yeah. we're a little too cold. It's a little front loaded. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um. Again, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and everything. I want to thank Mike for being my guest. We are going to shoot the <laughs> the review after this for for Thor Ragnarok, and that might be a quick review. <laughs> Um, but listen, you can always find me on Facebook. Search for the Generation Y Conservative. Hit the like button. Go to the YouTube uh, channel. Search for the Generation Y Conservative. Hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter with at Gen Y Conservative without the E on the end. And in order to listen to this podcast, um, again, in uh, audio form, you can tune in on Sundays from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLRN Internet Radio and uh, find me on iTunes as well. So in the meantime, I appreciate everyone joining in. Have a great night. Until next week, and God bless America. <laughs>